You didn't intend to write a book, did you? No. No. So how did it happen? Was it off the back of the blogs? No, it was before that. It was probably a couple of weeks after, after Gemma died. And as I've spoken about before, sleep just goes out of the window for lots of people who go through grief. Your sleep gets obliterated. And I'd quite regularly wake up at about half two and I sort of tossed and turned for a few days. And then I worked out, this is part of it. So I used to go downstairs, light the fire, because it was winter. And for a couple of weeks, I used to sit there and just didn't know what to do. But about a week before the funeral, I just started writing down how I was feeling mm. and some of the emotions I was going through. And particularly with Ethan, any time he came up with just an amazing question or just expressed his feelings, I just wrote it down. So I thought, in years to come, I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I don't want him saying when he's a teenager, Dad, I've never said that. No, you did, because I wrote it down. And he came downstairs one morning about half six, and I was tapping away, just going through how I was feeling. I think it was the day before Gemma's funeral. He said, what are you doing, Dad? I said, just writing down how I'm feeling, you know, what I'm going through, so that one day maybe we can look back and see how far we've come. He said, why don't you write a book? I said, well, that's a good idea. Maybe you could write it with me. And it, there are some pictures in the middle of the book mm -hmm. which are his Dear Daddy letters, so he is part of the book. And I just thought, OK. And, and the as, process began. With, with all of these things, for you, what starts out as, as a, a way of, um, of helping you, I mean, mm. it was a real help and a real comfort for you yeah. to be able to put those words down. Now, as this book sort of exists, it's, it's a way of, of helping others too. Yeah, and, th and that's, I think, has been my biggest motivation. Yeah, it has been cathartic, writing it. I actually enjoyed the process of writing. And actually having a period six months where I had something to do in the day, that was quite mm. important because it gave me a structure when he was at school. But I wanted to give hope to people who are going through this or about to go through or have gone through it because ultimately we know we're not alone, but mm. to actually hear we're not alone is massive. To give people understanding that grief can be very, very messy and I've been really honest about some of the things I went through and how much of an emotional mess I was a year ago. Just didn't know where I was coming or going half the time. Mm. To give people an understanding, even if they've not been through it, that the grief is messy. You're going to be snapped in half. All your emotions are going to fly. I had PTSD for months. My counsellor would regularly say, you've got PTSD. I was angry, crying. Every emotion out there I was experiencing, and hundreds and thousands of others do as well. Mm. Just to give people an understanding what grief can feel like, but also to know that there is a narrow way through it. You can't go over it, you can't go round it, yeah. but there is a way through it. Well, you yeah. say it's not an A to Z. No, it's not, no. It's just our story. And if people get some kind of hope out of that, then great. I'm not standing here, well, sitting mm. as the great grief guru. I'm not. I'm just sharing our story and hoping that out of that, people will feel a sense of hope for, for me and Ethan, but ultimately a sense of hope for themselves. Because I said to you guys a few weeks ago, when I was here with Steve Bland, we're all going to face this at some point. Mm. And it's about time we were a bit more honest about talking mm. about it, talking about our fears. And when we go through it, our friends and our family knowing a bit more about how you support mm. someone going through it. But also, I mean, her losing her, it was so sudden mm. and so quick. Yeah. And it was, it was horrific. And that you didn't know about the, the symptoms of the particular blood cancer she had. Mm. How could you? You weren't yeah. to know. Um, one of the parts in the book you talk about was that you've, you've actually put in there some of her text messages and reading the messages between her and her friends. There were moments in there where she was talking about certain symptoms she's had. So if anything, this book will help to raise awareness for, for, for blood cancer also. Well, exactly. And, and the, that was hard. I remember switching her phone on for the first time a few days after she went. And it's, it's so weird seeing these conversations because it's like she's still here and yet now she's not. And then seeing some of the exchanges between her and her friends, I never knew that she was complaining of mouth ulcers a month before she dies. That's, that's a symptom of blood cancer. It mm. could mean something entirely different and most often it does. I didn't know about that. And I wanted to give her a voice in those opening chapters because when I wrote those opening chapters and read them back, I thought, my goodness me, all the clues were there in terms of blood cancer. Mm. They were there, the mouth ulcers, the bruise that wouldn't go, the, the tiredness, the headaches. It was like Cluedo, putting them all together and going, they were all there, but we didn't see them because we were ignorant. And over half the UK population still cannot name you a single yeah. blood cancer symptom. So I hope for Bloodwise, it's a big help. But as you say, those symptoms help. could mean so many other things also. So and and that's why the message is so important yeah. for blood cancer, because they can be varied and very general, and yeah. more often than not, will mean nothing yeah. serious. Mm. But they were there, and for Gemma, it was serious. Yeah. You said that um, you managed to find the narrow path mm. through. So what was it for you? The biggest single factor was Ethan. You know, I talked very openly, honestly, in there about those moments where I came. There were two big moments where I was very close to ending it. it you have those moments where you, you can't see the light anymore. The thing that came into my head at that moment was the face of Ethan. Mm -hmm. And it was that same face that I saw on the day that I told him his mum had gone. 
and I knew I simply cannot for him, and actually for me and for my friends and my friends, I can't give up. I cannot. And he was the one that has pulled me through that drive to get out of bed in the morning to take him to school. But those amazing little anecdotes in there about some of the things he said to me, you know, that, that amazing moment on the first anniversary of Gemma's death. We go and stay in Blakeney in North Norfolk, beautiful house, some amazing guy from Sky had given us for the weekend. And he was more excited about seeing his cousins, let's be honest. But he knew it was a big weekend. And the night before the anniversary, I'm just sat on the stairs, a little bit quiet, and he comes up to me and says, Daddy, I said, yeah. So I know this weekend's going to be really hard, but if you're ever struggling, just come and give me a hug. Oh, oh, that's, bless that's him. A, that's a nine-year-old saying that. And, and this is, I hope, for parents as well to know that, yeah, we talk about kids being very resilient, mm. but actually kids are amazing, and he's yeah, been amazing and dragged um, me through. He's talked um, quite openly about you finding somebody else mm. and what would happen if you found somebody else and there was another baby. <laughs> um, <laughs> that yeah, question came that. really early, really early. It was just incredible, the conversations we had. I mean, his, the way he expressed himself has changed, which is why I put the daddy letters in there, because that became his way mm. of expressing his worries and his fears to me, because a kid who goes through this, and I'm the only surviving one in terms of his immediate family, mm. I'm the only surviving one, so he worries about me, so it's changed. But in his early days, he would ask some absolute middle stump questions, like one about, you could die tonight, Dad. You could, because Mum's gone so suddenly. Yeah. Within days, he's asking about what to do with Mummy's clothes. These were areas I was not even prepared to go to. No, of course. And within a week, he's saying, do you think you'll get married again, Daddy? Again, this is a week or, f or so afterwards. How, how can, I, I can't even go there, but what I learnt is, and I think this is really important, for any parent out there who's dealing with the loss of a loved one and is trying to navigate their kids through it, is you have to go there with them. Because if you don't, then bit by bit, the door on those conversations shuts mm. right. and he's got nowhere to go with yeah. it, so he'll go to someone else. You have written in the back in your acknowledgements a, a, a lovely a lovely acknowledgement for Doreen, haven't yeah. you? Yeah. Um, and she's quite obviously very important in your life. Yeah, special. Very, very special. And I, I just felt that I've been very open and honest um, and as we've said before and here, not intentionally, it just happened, mm. uh, about this journey. And this book is about helping others ultimately, you know, and, and some of the proceeds of the book go to the Shore Mind Foundation, which are a mental health charity, and Trigger Publishing are part of that, you know. It, it was just to share our story, but I, I don't want to share everything, I think, mm. in terms of protecting us. No, no, And in terms of protecting you. her as well, you know, she's not used to the publicity, and I wanted to protect her, but I wanted to pay tribute to her, because she is a very, very special girl. Yeah, well... And did the, um... did the, the VTs that you did for us help? I loved it. I loved it, because in many ways, when Gemma died, the chapter on that part of life shut, uh, and I'd been at Sky for 13 years doing the football. I absolutely loved it. Mm but there was no way that could carry on because it doesn't work for Ethan. And it just felt, doing those films with you guys, about an area I feel really passionate about, it felt like I'm doing what I've always loved, mm. you know, communicating with, but I'm doing something different. Mm. And I just, I absolutely love those days going out, meeting people, getting back to what I was doing before, because that's important for anybody going through grief, you know, is to get back to some of the things you were doing before, mm. to get the structures back in. I, I absolutely loved it. Well, you'll have to do some more. Yes. Oh, you will. thank you. you will. <laughs> thank you. Lovely thank you to very see much. you. Pleasure. And the book is out now. It is out today. And yeah. there we are. And there it is. There it thank is. You. And there it is. Thank you.